itu tim capan C1 keluar missing. Okay, so till now what we were doing? Till now what we were doing? Thermodynamic quantities. Okay, that was the most important thing. Till now what we have done is we have written <clears throat> this is a thermodynamic quantity in terms of what? Statistical quantity which is sitting over here. Yes or no? So this was a very important relationship. <clears throat> so now today what we are going to do? We are going to start with what? Different kind of ensemble. Clear? So we have started unit two, okay, from here. Is it okay? Have you all checked the yes. have you all checked the syllabus? So we'll be starting unit two. So it won't take much time. So from ensemble, what we have, we have got three kind of ensemble. One is micro canonical. Canonical ensemble. So what does this micro canonical ensemble means? Do you have any idea? This is basically an isolated system. What does isolated system means? What does isolated system means? Basically, isolated systems are those where none of the energy, none of the number of particles are exchanged. Clear? You have a system and you have closed it. Just think of this as a mold. And you have some liquid which is sitting over here. Or let's say you have got some particles which is sitting over here, molecules different air molecules which are sitting over here. And in addition to that, what you will do, you will insulate this, the walls. Clear? This is your isolated system. So microchemical ensemble is basically parameterized or basically it has which quantities? N, V, E. Clear? What is N? Number of particle is fixed in microchemical. Is fixed. Energy is what? Fixed. And your volume is also fixed. Volume is usually fixed. Clear? Is it clear or not? Yes, sir. Okay. What about the rest? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Now, next, what we are going to start with? Basically, how what omega is defined by what in this case? What is omega over here? This is your thermodynamic probability or your total number of microstates. So in micro canonical ensemble, basically it's an isolated system. Now second, we can start with canonical. Canonical ensemble. What a canonical ensemble? This is a kind of isolated system, but what? Your energy is allowed to be exchanged. Now think of this as this one. Open system. Do you know what is an open, a closed system? Think of this as a closed system. You have the same system, you have different number of particles which are sitting over here. Now you can see number of particle is fixed. Clear? But the but the system allows the energy to exchange because the walls are not isolated. Clear? The walls are not isolated, so the energy is allowed to change. Clear? In this case, omega is defined by what? N, V, and instead of energy, what do we use? We use temperature because the energy is changing. Basically, we allow the fluctuation of your energy in this kind of ensemble. In this ensemble, what are fixed? N is fixed. 
and what are fixed and e is changing can change is it clear and basically <clears throat> for this ensemble how it will look it will have an ensemble of in ve of this what let's say of micro canonical times e to the power negative beta e. clear this factor is coming due to affect the energy is allowed to be exchanged this is a weighted factor <clears throat> because when you plot it it will be centered around this minimum or mean of this energy e clear <clears throat> is it clear or not yes sir yes sir now yes, sir. basically what do you think of this as this is a closed system closed system and finally you have which system grand canonical grand canonical system ensemble in grand canonical ensemble what you have this is your open system what does an open system means <clears throat> i think you all have done in this thermodynamic itself open system is basically number of particle also can exchange you can see the wall is not been what it's not being made isolated Ideally. so what the energy can be the energy can be exchanged and also in addition to that you can add number of particles or you can take it out can you see because it's open just think of this uh, as smog and you can pour water over here and also you can take it out the water from over here clear so apart from yes, energy sir. what can exchange the number of particle can change clear so over here your omega will be defined by what as a n is also changing so we cannot use n so it's written by mu mu is basically called your chemical potential clear and instead of energy you always have your t and this is given by canonical due to canonical this is coming and apart from this this additional piece comes from what due to the exchange of particle why you are having this kind of you'll see it later but for a uh, timing what think of this as this one for a grand canonical is isolated for can nickel it's what now if you plot versus energy versus this distribution of energy let's say you plotted the distribution of energy then for grand canonical it will be a straight line why because the energy is not allowed to change so each and every state will have equal probability of having that energy because the energy is fixed just say for a time being for a canonical in energy if you plot then over here it's centerized center it will have maximum probability around this energy particular energy and the fluctuations are allowed can you see now the energy can change different energy are being allowed and in grand canonical it will be centered in energy also it will be centered around number of particles also clear so that's why you are getting a factor of that one this one so basically what is the takeaway is basically there are three kind of ensemble which you will basically deal with basically this micro canonical ensemble is basically used for this classical system and also actually there are how many constraint in the uh, micro canonical ensemble how many how many constraints are there how many constraints are there there are two constraint one is coming from your total number of particle is fixed 
that is your one constraint and second constraint is your what your total energy is is fixed these are your two constraint which is coming from your micro canonical for canonical you don't have such constraint you have only constraint in what your number of particle and in grand canonical you do not have any constraint <clears throat> basically what does this mean is this is your isolated system and this is what your closed system and this is your open system clear <clears throat> is it clear is it clear or not yes sir yes, so till now what we were going uh, doing now basically what we have to do we have to do three kind of statistics one is a classical which is basically a maxwell boltzmann clear this is for your classical gas and second is for which one for your quantum system great you'll uh, you learn about bose einstein and what here dirac fermi dirac statistics clear now this is how it will change the statistics will split into two parts one is your classical and one is your quantum is it clear or not yes sir and we have already talked about this yes, classical sir. and quantum system do you all remember in this phase space we have drawn some different cells and all and one thing we know from both the thing what we can extract the thermodynamic quantity just like your entropy from what k log of omega clear now the whole idea is to get what this thermodynamic different quantities using this two statistics <clears throat> clear so what will be the difference between this uh, classical and quantum system any idea previously i think we have done one what is the difference between this two classical and quantum statistics anyone For classical system, what you have in your phase space, you can have what continuous values. If you all remember, here we had h zero. H zero can go up to what zero. Here you have h Planck constant, which was fixed. And also, most important thing is second one: the particles are distinguishable. Indistinguishable. Sorry. in your classical and in your quantum is distinguishable sorry it's the other way around in your classical is distinguishable in your quantum is indistinguishable till now what kind of distribution did we consider distingu distinguishable or indistinguishable till now which we have taken the particles are distinguishable or indistinguishable do you all remember indistinguishable indistinguishable sir oh uh, yeah indistinguishable uh, no we have done distinguishable so that's why we are getting different microstate if you all remember so sir that's why we are writing a b do you remember yes sir yes sir over here we won't have ab we'll have just yeah. what a a a kind of thing a a in classical you don't talk about spin usually no spin over here you have to consider spin that you'll see it later let's first just move on with your classical statistics clear i oh, yeah.
Now this is very straightforward and very simple calculation usually. Now we have done all the hard works. Now it's very easy from starting from here. Let's do with your Boltzmann canonical distribution. Boltzmann canonical canonical distribution law. Clear? Is it clear? Basically, this is microcanonical. Okay, when you we talk about this classical, this Boltzmann canonical is basically microcanonical. Clear? Is it clear? Or just write Maxwell's yes, distribution law. Yes, Let's sir. just remove this. This is for a classical system. Before that, let's do one simple problem, okay? Let's do one very simple problem. Let's say you have a system with how many? Two cells or two compartments, okay? Let's say we have how many compartments? Two compartments. And how this A and B will be distributed? And we have two particles, two number of particles. Clear? So what are the different kind of distribution? One is, one is what? Two, one, 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 and one, two. For this macro state. For the micro state, what are the different distribution? What are the different distribution? A, B, and C. B, A, and C. This is for one. A and B. And in another wall, you can have C. Similarly, A, A, C, and B. We can have this, no? And apart from that, which distribution we can have? B, C, A. This one. And for this one, it will be A, there you go. They are just two particles, sorry. But we can either have A, B, or B, A. So number of microstate is two. For this one, how many microstate do we have? Just AB. We are doing for three particles. Sorry. Two particles, two box. We can either have two zero one one or zero two. From two zero, we can have what? Just A, B, and zero. For this one, we can have either AB or PA. And for the final one, we can have what? Zero AB. So number of microstate over here is one. Number of microstate here is two. Number of microstate here is one. So let's consider this distribution. Clear? We can use it. We can directly write this as what? Omega is equals to how much? Do you remember n factorial divided by what? n factorial small, divided okay. by what? L, small, two, small, uh, two, small, uh, hmm? two, small, small, two, small, two, small, n factorial, n minus n minus n minus n factorial, n minus n factorial, 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 or basically, we can write p to the power n, no? Because it's just a binary system. Just a binomial distribution. So how much we'll get? n factorial is how much two number of particles. In one box, we want what? One. One in one box. Clear? One factorial divided by one factorial times of, what's the probability of this particle? No. Why we are doing this? This is for the probability. We are just finding omega, no? 
yes or no yes sir this is this was for the probability so we don't need this probability is it clear or not okay, i can sir. tell you one more time is it clear clear sir, clear, sir. Okay, so that's why you'll get what two exactly two number of microstates. Clear. So you are asked to find the entropy of the system. So S will be how much? K log of just this omega. Omega is how much? Two. So basically, our entropy will be K log of two. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So in this three system, where the probability will be maximum, where the entropy will be maximum. In this three system, where will be a probability will be maximum. Yesterday, previously, I think we have done when we were dis, uh, when we were deriving this relation for thermodynamic quantity. Yes. Now this is very important, so that's why I have told you previously also. Your system with highest probability will be the system in equilibrium. Do you all remember? Do you all remember? Yes, sir. Why? <clears throat> Can you tell me why? System with highest probability will always have what? It will be in equilibrium. When probability is maximum. It means. Indira, anyone? Yes, sir. What does a system in equilibrium means? When probability is maximum. Okay. But simply from uh, our basic physics, what we were doing, apart from statistics, what does a system in equilibrium means? Thermal equilibrium, let's say, a system in thermal equilibrium means what? Your temperature of the two body will be same. So they will stop exchanging their energy. Clear? Yes, sir. No, yes, Ritika. Will all the system will try to move to their equilibrium, equilibrium state? Yes, sir. Ritika? Yes, sir. So will all the system will try to move towards that equilibrium to their equilibrium state? Yes, sir. I think so, sir. Why? Yeah. Actually, they want to come to their equilibrium position. Because they want to find some stability. Given two system, let's say two body, you made a contact between these two body. What? The heat will start flowing from higher to lower temperature. So after some time, what will happen? What it will happen? Like the two temperatures like will match and the heat will start stop flowing. So that is called your equilibrium state. Clear? Yes, sir. So usually all the system will try to move to their equilibrium state. So that state will be highly probable or not. Let's say, initially, what did you do? You started noting the temperature, T1 and T2, between these two body, A and B. They said T1 was higher than T2. And the temperature may vary. When the gradient is extremely high, what will happen? The heat will start flowing very fast. So after some time, what will happen? After some time, both of the temperature will become equal. Then it, it will stop and the heat will stop flowing and it will always remain in this state, equilibrium. Now you start taking measurement. Clear? And when you start taking measurement, then you will 
always find the system to be here. No, after the equilibrium state is attained, or the system, or in another way, let's say, let's we plot. We started plotting for T1 and T2. When the temperature is T1 and T2, then you got some point over here. This is a probability of system being in this state. For another, when T1, after certain time, what will happen? When this certain values is reached, this will stop. The heat will stop flowing. Let's say that is this point. This is the point at which your temperature T1 will be equal to T2. So usually when you take a number of different number of measurements, you will usually find the system to be in equilibrium. So that's why it's always very probable. The system in equilibrium will have the highest probability. Clear? Now, is it clear or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because the system will always yes, try to be in equilibrium. So you, you keep on taking the measurement, you will usually find the system to be in equilibrium. So the probability of that system will be extremely high. Clear? Yes, sir. <clears throat> So from this three system, which one is your equilibrium state? No, this is the second. Two equilibrium state. Two <clears throat> zero and zero. Q one one. Q one one. And Basically this one. Because two. this will have highest probability. Can you see two? Two is sitting over here. A because the number of distribution is more. Is it clear? Because yes, when sir. you find the probability, what is the probability of finding the system in this state? In this state means in this distribution, in this configuration with one one. It will be twice of this two. Can you see? Let's just find the probability. Total number of microstate is how much? Four. Then probability of being in one one is how much? Two by four is half. And the probability in being in Two zero is how much? One fourth. Can you see? So this is having the highest probability. So that's why the system will always try to be in this kind of state. Clear? So which of this system will have the highest, uh, highest entropy? Which of the system will have the highest probability? One man. It will have the highest entropy. entropy. One man. One one Why? Second. <clears throat> because you can because directly plug it into this probably. formula. Just see. You can directly plug it into this formula for different configuration. What you'll get? Let's say s yes, two zero. You'll get what? K log of one. S yes, one one. You'll get how much? K log of two. S yes, zero two. How much you'll get? K log of one. So how much is log of one? You just calculate and tell me. How much is log of one? You all got the value. How much of is log of one? Log of one. Mm, log of log one. Of one log, log of one is? And sir. Zero. And log of two? Zero point three zero. Zero point three zero. So that's why it will have a highest what entropy. Clear? K times of this one. Your Boltzmann constant is also sitting. Now, physically, when you think about this, why the system should have highest entropy? Any idea why this configuration of one one 
should have a highest probability. Why not two zero or zero two? Why this one one should have a highest probability? <clears throat> if it should have a highest entropy. Because basically entropy is what here? Randomness. Do you know? Do you all remember? So basically your entropy is basically your randomness. Now when you see about this, how many configurations are possible to A, B and B, C. So the randomness will increase. Clear? Yes, sir. Is it completely clear or not? I can explain this. Clear, okay. sir. So for this configuration, there is only one possible con configuration, which is zero and AB. Clear? So there is randomness will decrease. <clears throat> so in how does the system move towards the equilibrium in statistics is basically takes is the system will start moving from what? Less random to random to more random. Clear? Because the more <clears throat> more the number of basically it depends on your degrees of freedom. Basically, it has to it'll leave it for a time being. This system will be more random, and this will be less random. So the system will start from moving from less random to more random. So that's why do you all remember from the thermodynamics you have studied here, entropy always increases. Do you all remember? The entropy of the universe always increases. Have you all learned about this? Or the ent entropy always increases? Do you all remember? So in statistics, the, more, uh, the, <clears throat> the most important thing is what? The system will start evolving from less random to more random system. It will always try to maximize your what? Your entropy. So that's why do you all remember we use this distribution? So for this, while finding this for thermal equilibrium, do you all remember what did we do? The distribution will be given by what? N factorial divided by N1 factorial, N2 factorial. When we used to consider small cell, do you all remember this distribution? Indira, do you remember this? Yes, sir. Yes, when sir. did we do? When we consider the small, small cells in different compartment, then we got this. If the, if the cells or the compartments are of equal size, this is their distribution. Now let's check whether this is, this is your distribution with maximum probability or not. What is the n factorial? Two factorial. What is the n1 factorial? One factorial. And this is also one factorial. So it's basically two. Is it correct or not? Because it's obvious, because yeah. when you see two particles should be distributed over here in this manner. So this will have highest over here, one, one, that's why it's sitting. So that's why it will have always when you think about this, think of in this manner. Always when the system number of particles are equally distributed between each and every boxes, <clears throat> at that time, your probability will be maximum. Clear? <clears throat> Because these combinations are allowed. A, B, C, D can change in this manner. <clears throat> so in a sense, we can write S is equals to K log of N factorial divided by N1 factorial, N2 factorial, so on and so forth for huge number of particles. For, this is for classical. You'll learn about this later. 
now also there is one more question and do you remember previously when we considered the cell what did we do n1 energy here was e1 n2 energy here was e2 so on and so forth and what did we do is we started with in this cell the particle n1 to be in the cell with energy e1 in this manner i think we all derived for n2 with energy e2 so usually why do we take this kind of distribution because we have so many kind of distribution if you remember because one thing is this is having highest probability or this is at equilibrium and second thing is what because this is usually how your system is if you just remember you have different states let's say with different energy e1 e2 e3 e4 and we have to take n1 number of particle which is sitting at energy level e1 and number of particle will have energy e2 number of particle will have energy e3 so on and so forth let's say it could be any number so that that's why we always take that distribution clear that n factorial divided by n i factorial this kind of omega and if the cells are of different size you also used to have g to the power n i if you remember you just take your notes so we'll stop here today i think still we have got some time so tomorrow what we can do is we can discuss something now some of the problems then tomorrow we are going to do boltzmann distribution law yeah